Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back <laughs> to another edition of It's Just Damn Sports. I'm your host, Coach Lou. And right now, I gotta say, my co host, Coach Chris, MVP, he ain't feeling too well right now. And so, we're gonna send a lot of well wishes out there. The sports heavens rain down on Coach Chris. Let him come back next week. And I promise you, Coach Chris, MVP, we're gonna have you smoke. We're going to have your lasers. And if not, I'm going to slap him myself, okay? Because you got to have it. But don't worry, because guess what? We got some people for your coach who are going to come, and they're going to do a great job in your state. Right now, I want to say big ups and welcome again on the show to Dr. Marcia. Welcome, welcome, welcome. She's a sports aficionado. Let me tell you something. And she knows what she's talking about. But then we got another special guest. Starting at guard <laughs> from North Carolina a t Aggie Pride. a and own Mr. Kimball Cradle is in the building. What's up? All right. Good to be here. Good Man, to be hey, here. Hey, thank you for having me. Don't you, Google that. <laughs> don't Google that because it don't exist. <laughs> in case you two didn't know, these two are the classic story of lovebirds mm. who have been together for 29 years mm. and they have blessed this show to come bring that consistency and that love here to talk about sports. So can we give a round of applause everybody? All right. All right. <laughs> but we're just going to get right into it. Let's do it. You feel me? Because a few short hours ago, <laughs> the Boston Celtics oh, defeated <laughs> the Dallas Mavericks mm. in a gentleman's sweep. Four games to one. Where the MVP, <sighs> the hometown kid, Jalen Brown, not only captured the Eastern Conference Finals MVP, but my main man, 100 grand JB. Brought it home. Finals MVP. Yeah, he brought and it he home. did it all for the city of Atlanta. Big shout out to you, Jalen Brown. Yeah. Gotta yeah. give him his props. Gotta give him his props. His partner in crime. Jason Tatum did his thing too, averaging 30 points. Well, he's not average, but he did 30 points, 11 assists in a closeout game. The man was just phenomenal. And the worst he may say, it was just phenomenal. <laughs> what he was able to do in a closeout game against Luka Doncic and no show Kyrie Irving. <laughs> now, I know Dr. Marcy is going to give it because we have some Dallas fans in here. And don't worry, Dr. Marcy, your prediction and your pick is safe for me. I shall not tell them that you chose Dallas. I won't tell them that. America, I won't tell you that she chose Dallas. But what I will say is the Baltimore Celtics are here and they're here to stay. What y'all got on now? Yes, I've been eating crow for... Yeah, ever since he made that prediction, I've been eating that. It's okay, it's okay. I'm, you know, I'm, I can put a woman. <laughs> Big ups. Yes, yeah. she is. Yes, Big, Big ups, ups to them. Big Congratulations. Ups. Yeah. yeah, I said it. Congratulations. Big ups to the Boston Soldiers. Okay, so we got we got Kimmel over there say Boston Soldiers. So, so mm. did you think Kyrie Irving was going to perform better back in Boston? Or what, what made you cho- cho- choose him? I just felt like it was their time, and I did feel like he was going to perform better. I, I thought he was going to come out and just say, you know what, let me show them what I'm really made of. Let me get this done. You know what he made of? Leprechaun Lucky Charm. That's what he made of. Because <laughs> <laughs> the Lucky Charm, boy, he could follow. He followed the rainbow. Tom, he's get one, two, three, Cancun, because no Uncle Drew. Kyrie Irving averaged 18 points. He only, he only had one thirty-five ah. game. The other games were 12, 14, and 15 points. Well, I mean, hey, if, if uh, Lucas shooting 41 times, really, it took the ball out of it. They're taking the ball out of Kyrie's hands. Yeah. So, you know, what can one expect of Kyrie? Yeah, so, but Plus, it is. The sage. He didn't do the sack. Come on. <laughs> he didn't do the sack. Kyrie, you know when you go back to Boston, you got to do the sack. <laughs> what were go you all thinking? The Kyrie Irving. Mm. You had the monsters on. The people from the motherland didn't give you no help, man, Kyrie. that leprechaun was out. It was out. It was out, man. So, you know, and so, big shout out to Boston. Now, the real question that we have to our panel today is, where does this win? Uh, Celtics won 65 regular or 62 regular season games. Mm-hmm. Uh, they went 12 
and three in the in the playoffs, uh, and only lost one game in the finals. Mm. Where does that put Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown's team among the echelon of great Boston Celtics team with Bird and McHale, mm. Bird and Parrish, of the big three and uh, Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, and Garnett, and maybe even back to the days of mm. Casey Jones and Bill Russell? Where does that put, is that one of the top teams? Let's yes. talk about it. I, I say yes. Okay. Because they're, uh, they are. They're, <laughs> listen, they're big. The way those big men can move yeah. is it's just amazing. And so I think that puts them up there because they can they can do it all. They can defend. They can shoot. They can move up and down the court. So I say it puts them in the top three. You must have saw some highlights. Mm. Yes, I saw some highlights. <laughs> and I have to give it to them. It, it was just amazing to watch. And... Um, I'm going to give them their props. Like right. I said, I, I think they're in the top three. So top three? Top Woo. three. Top okay. three. Top three. Would you take out the 90s, the, the 2000s? Nah, I, I, me, personally, I, I, <laughs> I mean, you know, if you look at it, the, the Russell years, our teams are still the best. Oh, golden years. And then, golden. of course, and then, of course, But did they, you know, were they able to move that way? And that's the thing that gets uh, Bill Russell could. He Bill could Russell could move. Russell could move. Reason, could the reason why they won was because of Bill Russell being able to move that way. Uh, he may not have been able to shoot threes, but they didn't really have threes in the game yeah, back then. Yeah, three-point line back you know, then. Right. <laughs> but uh, now, if you look at, you got the Russell years, and then you got the Bird, McHale years, and Parrish they got what they got three championships three, yep, yep. during the 80s yep three. and so you know you're talking about kevin garnett garnett team only won one yep. and now this team is only uh so the jury is still out i think for this particular group you, you right know here what? you might got a point because garnett's uh team went there twice remember mm-hmm. they played back to back kobe right um 08 09 right 08 lost in 09 right tatum went in 2022 and back again in 2024. Right. They missed 2023. And so they won the one right now. Right. So I got to, you might be, I got a point. I'm, I'm still rocking Say, with to the To me, they tied. Tied, they tied for third. 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 Tied for third, man. But uh, it, this finals was not as exciting as the other finals. I mean, it, it was no close games. It was uh, some blowouts. It seems as if uh, Dallas wasn't ready for the moment. You could tell mm. Doncic a lot of whining. Mm. When you get to the when you get to the finals, all that stuff got to be coached out. I think he was he he just he was frustrated, you know, because they were they were talking about he may have been injured or yeah. playing hurt. Yeah. But I think his I think he was just frustrated and his feelings were hurt because he couldn't defend. He couldn't defend the athleticism of Boston, and I think Boston recognized that and took advantage of it. I said that the athleticism. It was there. And I I, I do agree with you that when you get to that level, when you're in the finals, that whining got to go. It got to go, man. It's it's got to go. You you just, you got to play hurt. Yeah. Yeah. You have to play through whatever is going on. The ball is going up. The ball is already up the court. You still whining. And now you put your teammates in a bad position. Yeah. 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 You're down there on the floor having a temper tantrum. And that's what happened in game three. Uh, 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 Doncic fouled out the game, yelled at his bench and coach for, you better F, challenge F and the F and call. So you put your team in a bad position. Right. And you knew it was a bad call. You knew you fouled a man, Doncic. Right. Right. (laughs) You you did that. And you are right, Kimball. He... His defensive proudness wasn't there. He had one defensive game, mm. and that was game four in which they won. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, they didn't really attack him. They didn't really, yeah, yeah. And they didn't really attack him. Yeah. Uh, uh, for Boston. But big shout out to the Celtics, man. I'm so happy yes. that those brothers yes. had an opportunity to win. Jason, I saw, I heard Jason Tatum post conference. He said, he said, well, what they going to say now? Mm. And that's, that's. Shout out to the head That's coach, power. man. Shout out to the head coach. Take yeah. it off for Ime Udoka, yeah. the sex scandal. Brad yeah. Stevens. Oops. It was a scandal now. Yeah. Brad Stevens going up into the uh, uh, up front office because he couldn't win the big one. My man Sam Cassell. Got, Sam nah, he got Cassell. another ring. You got know, another three ring. rings. Hey, guess what? Did y'all know? Two as a player. Jeff Van Gundy. Coach Gundy was the special counsel on the team. Y'all didn't know that. I did mm-hmm. not. I didn't know that. I didn't find that out until after the final. So they got a secret weapon going to these play calls. Yeah. I just thought it was amazing, man. <laughs> I thought it was amazing. But, you know, we got some sad news and all, all of this as well, too. 
uh, found out that uh, Charles Barkley, who is the star, uh, one of the stars on, uh, as we segue this next segment into Inside the NBA, said that next season will be his last season commentating for Inside the NBA, and he's retiring. Mm. I, I, I'm sad because I, I like too. him as a commentator, mm-hmm. but um, you know what? I think this last year that he's on the show, mm-hmm. he's gonna just let it all. You know, he was yeah. already he gonna let it all hang out. He was already a loose cannon, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he's gonna big let shout it out all to him, hang big out. Big shout out, big yeah. shout yeah. out. So to it, him. it's gonna be, yeah. I think, a really good um, season for them. He's, he's big just shout out. Let to it him. rip. Yeah. In case for those of you watching at home that don't know the story, um, the uh, NBA has TV deals and um, TNT got outbid by NBC. Now I'm sure you know this, Kimball and yeah. Dr. Marcia. Back in the '90s, it was all NBC. Right. With uh, who was my main man? My black guy. Uh, he was doing all the. Uh, uh, Amar, Rashad, Amar Rashad, Rashad and, and Jim Brown. And Jim not, Brown. Not, not well. Right? Was right. It, not Jim Brown, but um, what was his name? Uh, Amar Rashad stood. Amar Rashad is like you know, like like um, on the side. On court the side, side, yeah, he was a side commentator. My man, man was um, in the studio. In the studio was um, what's his name? Brown. Well, you know, and his first name is Jim. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Jim Brown. Mm-hmm. Well, somebody at home, let us know yeah. in the comments what's going on. But they ran the nineties, yeah. uh, Jordan, wow. all of that eighties. Yeah. The NBC. Then it, they lost it to TNT. But NBC put a boatload, mm. truckload of money back the Brinks truck up and said, we're going to pay. Man. And they outbid it, TNT. And so this will be the last season, the 2024-2025 season will be the last right. season mm-hmm. inside the NBA. So that's Ernie, Kenny, Shaq, and Charles Barkley, who I might add is a better show. Don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's I a better agree. show than first take as far as well, talking yeah. basketball yeah. and sports and just laughing and ain't no I was gonna say it was more well rounded yeah, yeah well you know you think about it you got you know you got you do have accomplished basketball players yeah compared to first take which is only journalists right well except for Shannon you know yeah but uh yeah so it's gonna be sad to yeah. see him go I, I, oh, yeah. I don't know what's gonna happen but uh I don't know. Where do you put inside the NBA as far as a top show as far as sports? I mean, do you, is it in your top? Is it in your Mount Rushmore? Hmm. You got Mount you got to think all time. Yeah. So when you, you go got back, NBA. Yeah. yeah. You got uh, baseball and all yeah. sports is inside the NBA one of your top sports commentating shows. I don't know if it's Mount Rushmore. You don't know if it's in Mount Rushmore. Sorry. Shay. I mean, what what what, what show? Would I mean, you, you put think ahead? about it. Um, and I'm, I can hear the the theme music. It was a football um, show. Oh, forgot yes. about John Madden. Yes. Madden. Yes. Oh, we talk. Oh, we talk. Well, Madden was. I'm not sure about Matt. Well, Monday Night Football. Monday Night, Monday night Football. Monday Night Football. Yes. Yeah, Monday Night Football. I, can hear that I mean, theme are you music. talking? Are you talking about the combination? I'm about all time, just sports shows. All time. Sports shows. Come okay. Um, if you had to put it, is it in your Mount Rushmore? Or can you see one or two shows? Ahead of inside the NBA, I can I can see it being up there. I can see it being up there. You know you you know you know it's a whole bunch yeah. of in produ- yeah. production said it got yeah. a lot of Emmys. Ernie yeah. got a lot of Emmys. Ernie Indies. man, you know Ernie's been doing inside the NBA before Shaq and all them came on. Boy, it was all Ernie before Ernie made the show. There you go. There you go. Yeah, Ernie made the show. When you look at the very beginning, when well, I guess when TNT first got the contract, Ernie was the one that really made that show. Uh, you know, because those guys were, like I said, Grant Hill, Shaq, King Smith, all those guys were playing ball still with the Jordan and all that going on. But Ernie was the guy that really started it and held it down. Shout out to Ernie. Did, yeah. the, did he battle uh, cancer in his career? Yeah, I think he did. I think he, he was out that. for a while. And, you know, you know, you know, God bless that brother, man. He's been doing this thing for a while. Craig said, yeah, Craig said, yeah, TNT, yeah. man, had a lot of yeah. them, man. Um, I even put it up there. Sports Center was the top show. That's in probably my yeah. mind. Rushmore Sports Center, um, Monday Night Football, uh, Inside the NBA. And I got to tell you, mm. man, uh, uh, this is baseball what, Jim show. Jim Lampley or somebody? <laughs> who, who? This is a baseball show that I follow uh, with the Braves. They Sometimes they have uh, Chipper Jones, mm. John Smoltz, Dale Murphy, that's in my top two, my top uh, Mount Rushmore two, man, that baseball show, man. But but mm. from us here, it's just damn sports. 
to the Inside NBA. We bid you a fair ado. And in the words of Charles <laughs> Barkley, one, two, three, Cancun. All right? <laughs> Come on the show. After y'all retire, come on on the It's Just Dance Book. We love to have you on the show. Awesome. Atlanta's number one spot for events, photography, brand marketing, video production, or graphic design. If you have media or entertainment needs, contact us at www.hempent.net. Now, we've gotten all that out the way, the basketball season is over. We have a farewell to one of the best shows. Now it's time, and we were talking about this in the green room. Let me tell you something. We had a heated discussion in the green room <laughs> about who should be the number one draft pick this year. And you know who has the number one draft pick this year? A- ask me, Dr. Marcia, who has the number one draft pick? Who has the number one draft pick this oh! year? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the Atlanta Hawks. I don't know how they did it. They had a 3.3% chance to land the number one draft pick. And you know, Landon they did the same. so far. <laughs> 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 Something ain't going on. How they got the draft pick. The other but, team was like, okay, we didn't really miss out on anything. <laughs> right. So, so uh, one of the questions by the producer was, uh, who should the Atlanta Hawks pick in the NBA draft this year? Mm-hmm. We wanna, and, and, and I think we should start down here with our guest, uh, Mr. Kimball, man. Who do you think the Hawks should pick with the number one pick in the NBA draft now. We got Euro players. I think, we got homegrown players. Yeah. I think uh, just based on what the NBA has done over the years in, in terms of being able to allow these European players to come right in and start playing NBA ball uh, is to go after the kid from France. Oh, Star? Star. Alex even though Star? he's Even though he's a, he would be a project and whatnot, but I think, you know, it would be well worth the investment because he already has the skills, skill sets to, you know, really compete. Just got to put some size on him. Uh, well, he is a seven-footer. You know, bring and I think he will definitely be. Ooh, <laughs> take him to Magic City, get him yeah, some lemon pepper you know, wings. You know, even, put some weight on Yeah, because he reminds me of, the, you know, the kind of the Greek freak. Just put yeah, some, you know, when he yeah. first got over here to the Bucks, they basically, you know, really invested some time and put some muscle on him and, you know, look yeah. where they are. And I just yeah. hope that this can, you know, that the, uh, the Hawks are really able to do something, you know, you know, that is tangible with this pick. Yeah, really. And not, yeah. and, not, and just get it, try to get it right. You may not get it all the yeah, way right. Try to, try to get, get right. close to being right. This has never happened in the franchise history. The number, we've been in the lottery, but the number right. one overall, yeah. Right. That's it's been big. a gift from the basketball guys, I'm telling you. Mm. What about you, Dr. Marcy? Who do you think? Well, I've been listening to the conversation, and I think, and y'all don't laugh, but go ahead and bring Bronnie down here. Now, that's what I'm talking about, <laughs> Dr. Marcia. <laughs> Bronny Yeah, James. I think it would be good for, for the Hawks organization in that because when he comes, guess who's coming with him? LeBron. Yep. James. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. So it would be good for the franchise. Do the Hawks got the, have the money to put out? Man, you man, we'll get rid of everybody on the team. <laughs> everybody got to go. It's Capella, everybody, Hunter, we go pay, everybody we go got pay to LeBron go. fifty million. We gonna pay LeBron sixty million for or, two years. Or, but here's the other thing: LeBron, as a, a, a sacrifice for his son, might take a little less. Come on. Take the lead, man. I'm on LeBron and win a chip for all. Oh, you got me so excited. Wow, oh, we got, not quite that. Can't take the lead, man. Well, he got, well, he got the movie deals in LA. Yeah, but he might take less than what he would less. normally. I, was like, I want part ownership. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh. <laughs> for real. So, oh. wrestling gonna give up that. You know what? Give it to on him. Back on the back end. On the back end. Give it to him on the back end. If he wins the chip in his first two seasons, give him 30% of the company. <laughs> oh, wow. 30% of the team. <laughs> that would be good. That would be really, that really would be, good. I, like I said, I think it would be good for the Hawks organization. 
Uh, you know what? I I I'm on. I agree with you. I, I was gonna throw this caveat here at you. I was gonna say my man Zach Eady out of Purdue. He's seven mm. four. He brings out shots, shooting. He brings size, and he has a chip on his shoulder. Mm. You haven't been hearing a lot about yeah, him in the draft, right. but he is homegrown. He may be a little sluggish though. Mm. Getting up and down the court, but the man can shoot the three. He's big enough to defend, and he can snatch rebounds. I like him out of Purdue. I thought he gave a great effort versus UConn. Mm. UConn had too many athletic uh, wings. But if, if you can't get him, let's go for the gusto, Landry Fields. You talk to Bronny James. You tell him he'll be a first-round pick, so there's no two-way contract. He's going to be guaranteed a league minimum, $10 million, $12 million a year. You play him right alongside Trey Murray. Mm. Uh, LeBron, uh, LeBron, you bring LeBron to play your small forward. Ooh, now you got Bronny playing your two guard, point guard. Is this a win win? You sure? I, <laughs> all right, that's a lot of pressure. On well, a young look, guy his, like that. His heart is his heart is fine. He's got a big, he's got a hundred percent bill of health. He, he's, 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 I, I mean, we well, see what this hoping. is doing to Caitlin Clark. Oh. oh. You see what this is doing to Caitlyn Clark. Lord, did we have to bring up Caitlyn? God, no. I don't want to talk about her. Lord. I'm sick of her. You see the, the pressure. pressure. The pressure. Well, her she pipe brought it on herself. herself. But, and, and of course, you bring Bronny in. Bring you got in. all these uh, through, and you know, you bring him in, you draft him, you know, looking at this particular method of, of, take, of taking place and bringing him in, you don't think. All these cats are going to be at this kid so and trying you, to embarrass him. That's a good point. But you bring him in, you let him be your point guard, let Trey Young develop him. Then you got his daddy playing the three. So this, this is this is how I see. So you gonna try to you gonna try to shield him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Media Avengers, the Atlanta Avengers. <laughs> so this is what my starting lineup looks like. Trey Young at the one, Dejounte Murray at the two. LeBron James plays your small forward. You have Okongwu playing your power forward, and you keep Kent Capella on a one year deal. Everybody's you can a win one some year games. deal. You can win some games. You know, okay. you win some games. Then you got. Ronnie yeah. coming off the bench with a second unit and Bogdanovich. Right he got on. this whole thing figured out. Now, now the producer said he's gonna trade her, but you gotta keep. Listen, you gotta keep some of mm -hmm. these players. But if you get, if you draft Ronnie James, you know you have a very, very good chance of getting LeBron. And what does that do for a franchise? It changes the trajectory. Yes, it does. He has been to eleven finals. He Ooh. has 10 five, so he knows how to coach a team. To, and guess what? He can go into the sunset. Now, this is my soliloquy. If I was on first day, <laughs> Stephen, they say, your soliloquy is good. We, Molly, we got to cut some break. But why not? He stopped this thing through. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I like got it. the number one pick. Look, I like it. Fine. Wait, that's what we got to lose. We already losing. <laughs> that's true. We already in the play. That's in. true. That's true. That's true. And if, 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 <laughs> if we can get a verbal commitment from LeBron that to come to Atlanta, I would. I would. Cause what else you got to lose? Because if you don't, what you do? You play into the All Star break, and then you trade away everybody, and then you just rebuild around Bron. Oh, there you go. The rebuild. Rebuild around. Oh. Rebuild around Bron. He says he's a great defender. He has six, seven wingspan. He's a great defender. He's going to develop a shot. You put him in the D league. He got to go right to the D. Got to go right to the D league summer league if you play him. Hmm. Right. So you okay? You're going to draft the guy. You're going to send him right to the D league. That's what we did. We did. We did the same thing with the last two first okay. round draft picks. Okay. Except for Trey <laughs> and Kobe Buffkin. <laughs> and stuff. Come back. We made a song for Ice Trade the game. Ice Trade game. But you know what, man? This has been a great show. We ain't awesome. gonna hold too long. We're gonna give it to some final thoughts man just about some let's do some predictions mm. it's fun right let's do some nfl super bowl <laughs> predictions okay who is gonna win the okay. super bowl in 2025 2024 2025 who's gonna win super bowl we're gonna start with mr Craig. oh those guys up in detroit are ready no, he didn't say no. Those guys in Detroit are ready. <laughs> Believe me, 
They are what ready. Team in Detroit? You talking about Motown? Detroit Lions. <laughs> the Lions. The Lions are, are you ready. Serious? My prediction is the Lions will be will win the Super Bowl in 2025. The Lions. The Detroit Lions. Will NFC win their, North. They're they they will win their first official Super Bowl. Where Barry Sanders Lions. come out of retirement? No. No. <laughs> no. And Megatron said, "Man, I, come on predict, back." And I predict a kid out of Greensboro, North Carolina, will be, be will lead them to that championship. You know, what kid is this? Hooker. What, what's his name? Hooker. What does he play? Quarterback. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> so we're gonna get rid of uh, uh, uh Jared, We golf is out. Jared, he's gonna get hurt. Hooker's in. Jared Goff's going to get hurt. Uh, Hooker, Herndon Hooker is going to come in. And lead them to the promised land, Detroit Lions. So I'm pretty sure that is a thousand to one odd. You probably get your bet in now. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me, man. If you get your bet in right now, you get your bet in now. Right. you'll be a right. gazillionaire. Right. <laughs> ain't nobody. <laughs> and you heard it right here on NJS Sport, where dreams <laughs> do come true. <laughs> what a bold! That is a bold prediction from Kimber right here. That might be one of the boldest predictions all season. But then we're going to go, let's get some Dr. Marcy. Well, you know, the, the cradle household, we believe in being bold. <laughs> okay. Oh, so Lord. You, <laughs> so you know who my prediction The Lions, too? No. Oh, I already know where you're going. The Bears. Oh! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. A house divided. Ain't they in the same division? There's yeah. a house divided. Wait a minute. A wait house a minute. divided. No, no, no. Hold on. No, we're they're divided. Not. Because I'm a Bears fan, I'm a Washington fan. We're not divided, but okay. now I'm, I'm just looking at it from what I've seen and going into the year. You know. Okay. So a house, a house connected, except for y'all going two different teams. <laughs> right. Two balls. Right. I got you. Right. I right. got you. Because I, I, I ain't what buying into the Bears. Yet. The Bears. Oh wait. Not, so, oh, yes. the Bears. They got the number one draft pick. What was his name? Weird. Then they just bench him in. Uh, See y'all can listen. Training. Yeah, like you talking about you sending your your no. You talking about sending your play person to the D League? We gonna oh! train him up. We gonna train him up, right? Okay. There's no D League. In it, he's gonna be getting support. He's gonna be getting support. He's going to be amazing. Okay. I'm gonna uh, go get the sage. Uh, yeah, you got. I'm mad. It. I'm mad. I don't even trust. Is it Nagy the coach? Whoever the coach is, I just look. The boy is not doing too good. He, he is what you call fool's gold. Okay. No, you Ooh. did. Because he looks so good in the red and gold with the, the USC Trojans. But you gotta have people. You gotta have coaches and trainers who are there to support you, and they can build you up. And, you know, Right. Yeah. I'm so glad you said that because at this particular franchise, we have coaches <laughs> <laughs> that build you up. I just love this show. We have coaches build you up and trade that you. Build you. <laughs> okay. That build you the up. The Bears. We have, we have coaches that train and development. And uh, let me tell you, this regime right here, uh, the uh, the new regime for the Atlanta Falcons. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh. with Raheem Morris, no. uh, with, with okay. uh, Arthur Blank, uh, mm-hmm. with Michael Penix Jr., yeah. mm-hmm. I do uh, like Bijan Robinson, mm. Kyle Pitts, mm-hmm. Drake London, Darnell Moody. You gotta go through Detroit. Oh, roll, roll, roll. <laughs> <laughs> you name them. Uh, Jesse Bates, <laughs> AJ Terrell, we got them. And this new. Coaching regime. See, this is what. Let me just come close to me. Bring close, close, close. <laughs> <laughs> Atlanta Falcons <laughs> And so that being said, we we gonna put Matt Ryan in the ring of honor with Arthur Blank. Y'all going up there? Stay up there. We are past y'all. Okay. <laughs> we passed Matty Ice stage. It's all about uh, Michael Penny's. Cause I have a prediction. That in the first six games, mm-hmm. Cousins will be will be five and one. If Cousins gets hurt in the seventh game, <laughs> and Michael Pinks comes in and leads the Atlanta Falcons to the Super Bowl. Oh. I would and like the to see first that. 
soup the, the first Super Bowl victory corner. for the city. And then we can shut them damn saints up. <laughs> <laughs> Who that? We can shut this. We can, we, can, we can go ahead and sink the ship in Tampa Bay. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> and them birds going to sink them talons and them panthers in Carolina. And the rest <laughs> is history. Okay. Bravo. All right. <laughs> I'm, going for, <laughs> I'm going for them, them falcons. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> But you know what? It's been some bold predictions. Listen, please make sure you like and subscribe to the page. This has been such a fun show, man. I want oh, yeah. to give my supporting cast right here a round of applause. Let me give a round of applause. Coming in, Glad filling in here. for MVP, uh, Coach Chris, man. We appreciate this show is dedicated to you, brother. Get well. Come back soon. And until then, we ain't. Go with nowhere. <laughs> we ain't going nowhere. We can't be stopped now. Cause it's just their sports. <laughs> Peace. All right. What a fun awesome. show, man. High five, high five. All right, fun awesome. show, man.